Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is my review of episode 5 of Picard. Uh, what can I say about this episode? It took me three days to watch, and I generally liked it, but it took me three days to watch. And I was busy, you know, with, uh, you know, uh, work projects, but I could have watched it all in one day. So this is episode 5 of, I believe, 9 and it has seven of nine, and my OCD is just telling me, why didn't you work her into episode seven and then call the seventh of nine episode seven of my, oh, oh, you're, oh. I mean, it's actually, I guess, being two, it would, it would have been even worse if it was the sixth out of nine, and this was the one about seven of nine. So um, this, uh, this episode was half ruined by the critical drinker, and then uh, his theory was disproven. So uh, the critical drinker is a uh, sober man who pretends to be drunk <laughs> while, while reading a script that he wrote. Very well written script, but it, it's a, I, I hope I didn't break anyone's heart. They're like, wait, what? There's no Santa Claus? And the critical drinker is sober? Yeah, he's sober. Uh, he, he's, he's just too focused to, to, to believe that he's uh, drunk. But uh, he's great and he's been reviewing uh, the episodes and uh, he, he always points out that how um, passive and docile the male characters are. And I'll go that even one further. You know how in Star Trek they all they have all these, you know, transporter buffer malfunctions. Oh, you know, uh, Picard is a kid now. Oh, their brains got switched. Oh, it copied Riker and Riker went up, but then one of them was left down. I want you to imagine that every single person in this series is actually trans. By that I mean that their actions, behaviors, attitudes, everything at personality, almost everyone makes more sense if they are the opposite gender. For the sake of argument, we are pretending as if there are two genders. Uh, or we are saying it. So, Picard seems kind of off, but if you imagine him as a 90-year-old woman, it makes sense. The captain, you know, is very weirdly docile and servile, and uh, doesn't really like to take the initiative and seems kind of skittish, and is, is, is just kind of wants to stay on the ship and clean it. Am I nuts or would that make more sense if it was actually a female character? Now, yes, these are some broad generalizations about men and women, but once you start noticing it, you kind of never start stop noticing it. You'll have a scene where, uh, you know, uh, uh, Seven of Nine comes in. She's like, he's, he's uh, you know, uh, Picard's like, would you like any tea? She's like, pour me some bourbon. And you're like, just imagine Grandma Picard and saying this to Seven of Nine, the dude, and it fits a lot better. Uh, and then the next scene is, I believe it was Raffi. Again, she's at the bridge, and she's she's also pounding some whiskey. And it's like, then at one point, she, like, the, the captain of the ship, he goes to light a cigar and... And she waves at him like, don't do that. And he just nods. Uh, the, the thing that really kind of blew my mind is uh, uh, the critical drinker points out that men will have no response. Like the, the conversation will stop with the woman's essentially command. Um, and so a woman will command a man or roast him and he'll just sit there and take it. And it's, it's really odd. Um, but then if you imagine that it's, that it's like this... Uh, this universe where, you know, everything's kind of switched and the, the women are very super aggressive and domineering and the men are just kind of scared of them. Um, uh, it's like, uh, I saw this saying, it's like, um, somebody said on Twitter, it said, um, uh, men are, are afraid of being falsely accused of being a rapist, but women are afraid of being raped. Um, so it talks about, you know, the kind of physical power dynamic between men and women. But it seems like the opposite in this, uh, you know, the men are, seem scared of the women. 
they seem overpowered and the, you know the women are hard drinking gun shooting punch you and knock you across the room uh, type of people so it's just kind of odd it's one of those things where once you kind of realize it that every man is going to be docile and, and, and essentially feminine and every woman's going to be extremely masculine and commanding uh, you know there are some exceptions that it just becomes like a um, almost like a party game you know you just do it in your head oh Picard is actually a woman Raffi is actually a man the captain of the ship is a woman um, uh, and seven of nine is a man once you do that it all kind of makes sense um, uh, so the one about this is uh, so they spent three episodes getting a ship then they immediately went on a side quest um, uh, and now we're going on I, I mean te technically it's not a side quest uh, but it is um, because you know they need Bruce Maddox but Again, it's a man being rescued, and it's a man who is being avenged. Uh, the men in this are the damsels in distress. Uh, now, technically, they're going to go rescue a woman, but we've seen from episode one that this woman is some sort of cyborg synthetic being that can fight five men at once. So she's not really a damsel in distress. The men in this series are the damsels in distress. Um, so they go to Free Cloud, which we've been hearing for, and Free Cloud is basically every gambling planet you've ever seen in any sci-fi ever. It's, it's honestly, I thought the the most inventive thing was when they're approaching the planet and they get these basically personalized uh, advertisements, um, and uh, for, so, somehow they are gauging each you know individual potential customer very very well and for for Raffi they're basically like drugs you want drugs and she's just, and then you, you literally have to bat them away um, uh, there's a funny one that's advertising like boxing and then the captain's like you got to punch it so of course what do we see we see a woman punching things not a man men eh, they'll fight it <laughs> the thing is they just went to go recruit uh, uh, this uh, uh, space elf Elrond um, and then he did like nothing in this episode, like absolutely nothing. It's all the women punching and shooting and fighting and commanding and coming up with the plans. Um, and then the men are playing dress up. They're playing dress up. They're wearing berets. They're wearing eye patches. They're dressing like pimps from like some office party. Yeah, it's the, the, the women are men and the men are playing dress up. Um, uh, so they have to go uh, get uh, uh, Bruce Maddox, who's being traded by a extremely aggressive, domineering female gangster. Um, and then uh, Seven of Nine is in the mix, and you find out that nobody is surprised. <laughs> I just assume all women are lesbians when I watch any kind of like genre stuff or read a Marvel comic. So th the funny thing is they kind of do this like reveal that Seven of Nine and the female gangster had a relationship, but I was just like, I, I just assumed they did. Like as soon as I saw there were two female guest stars, I just assumed they were either currently dating or they were exes and they were. Uh, to the show's credit, they don't really hammer it. Like if this show would have been shot two years ago, oh my gosh. And I even looked at like the geek media and even the geek media was just kind of like, Seven of nine confirmed bisexual. It's like, okay, yeah, okay, fine. 2018, oh my gosh, that would have been all you've heard of. So um, Seven of Nine has become a Fenris Ranger in this very lawless, hopeless um, uh, universe that this alternate Star Trek... Uh, oh, that's when I was really realizing this party game of all the men are women and the women are men. Uh, I also had to say that I've never... I don't get that sad with this series because... I never considered it to be real Trek. In my mind, there is this other timeline. It's the real Trek. You know, Picard is retired, probably consulting at Starfleet Academy. He's respected. The, the universe is, for the most part, peaceful. This is just some dystopia. Uh, this is a mirror universe, if you want to use Star Trek. Uh, uh, another mirror universe. Um, it's just the same thing with like um, the Zack Snyder DC superhero movies. I didn't really get that butthurt because I never considered that to be the main or real Superman. 
I was like, okay, this is just a dark take on Superman and glowing eyes and like really angry. That was a common thing from the DC comics from like 2000 to like 2010. It used to happen all the time. He was always just like eyes burning with rage and just just blasting everything with his heat vision. And uh, uh, Batman, so so I was like, yeah, fine. They're they're alternate takes. So this is an alternate take. It's an alternate take of a Star Trek that's you know a violent and hopeless universe, uh, and also one where the women act like men and the men play dress up. Uh, the Seven of Nine stuff was done fairly well. Uh, so one of the other things is you know uh, uh, the critical drinker brought up. He's like, you know, notice how every interaction is. A woman putting a man in his place, a woman demeaning a guy, being snarky, being dismissive, all these type of things. And honestly, like the first 15 minutes, that's 100% true. But then once you get into it, it's not true. Seven of Nine has a very uh, a close relationship with a, a man who was also a Borg and who had been de-Borgified or whatever you call it. Um, so he's tortured and killed and she's avenging him. And she says that uh, he was like a son to her. Um, uh, you see that uh, Raffi is trying to uh, meet with her son, who she's estranged from, and, and that was a good scene. Raffi's a really good character. It was not, um, and very, very vulnerable um, uh, in the scene with her uh, estranged son. So uh, the critical drinker's theory held up pretty well for the first 15 minutes, and then, you know, you were seeing, you know, women who have affection for men and don't just hate them and are always bossing them around and demeaning them. But I will still say that. Most of the motivations and the personalities and the behaviors, they still make much more sense if you flip them. Seven of Nines, you know, uh, you know, uh, vengeance and protective, that, that's more of a male thing. Uh, the men always just kind of submissively agreeing to all of the plans of the women. Um, you know, uh, the, wom the woman gets advertised boxing. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, the, 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 the round-headed uh, female scientist. Oh, we can tell that you like to buck. Well, of course, she's a woman. She likes to fight, uh, drink, uh, pee standing up. I mean, it's, it's classic, you know, female behavior. Um, but uh, the weird thing is, Picard really, really did seem like a, um, a supporting character in this, more so than in any of the other uh, episodes. And one thing that's, you know, kind of sad, but it's an elephant in the room, is... How doddering is Patrick Stewart and or Picard? One of the things I liked about this is they're not doing that weird thing where if you watch the Die Hard movies and the, and the Indiana Jones movies, he gets like exponentially tougher every single episode. By the, what was it, the, the fourth Indiana Jones movie from like 10 years ago? Oh gosh, he was like an MMA fighter. The last couple Die Hard movies, John McClane is like, getting in fist fights on the wings of VTOL aircraft and like falling 80 feet onto concrete and he's fine. Um, so in this one, Picard's an old man and he needs help and he, sometimes he's just standing around and that's good. But at some point when he was doing like a really cheesy French accent and playing dress up and being silly, I was like, is this Patrick Stewart in like a, just kind of just being like kind of old and doddering? It's like, I want to play dress up. I want to be in a disguise. Okay, well, I have a question. Yeah, sure, you can put a disguise on, but can you bite someone's nose off and then spit it back onto their face and it perfectly reattaches like Pistachio Disguise he did? Um, uh, but uh, anyway, so um, is it a recommend? Eh, if you watch the other ones, it's fine. Uh, we got. Actually, we really didn't get any more clues. That, that, that um, Romulan brother and sister, I don't even think they were in this whole episode. Um, uh, something with the Borg. Romulans created the Borg, and then they tried to clamp down on them. I don't know. Maybe the Borg created the Romulans. That would subvert expectations. So anyway, thanks for watching. And I'll have... Uh, I don't know what I'm doing next. I don't know. Wait, I'm watching something right now. What am I watching? watching Star Trek. Oh, I'm watching, I'm doing that thing where I'm watching like five movies at once. I'll watch like five minutes ago. Eh. I'll watch 10 minutes from this other one. Eh. Just like skipping back and forth. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.